this is the Noise Master Buds. And if you don't know who they are, they're an Indian company that recently got partially acquired by Bose, which is why you now have sound by Bose. And I'm interested, I'm curious as to see how much Bose did here. Did they just mess with the ANC? Did they also mess with the sound? What have they done? Now this is a 93-ish dollar, so 8,000 rupee Bluetooth earbud that claims solid battery life, that has support for LHDC, but not Aptex or LDAC. It's a stem style earbud that fits in your pocket and has this dial, which is not really a dial. I was upset to find out, although there was a volume dial in your pocket and it kept moving around, probably not a great idea. To be fair though, it does have a little light on it that tells you about battery life and things like that and pairing mode, of course. They are stem style earbuds and from a comfort point of view, this is pretty pocketable. This is very comfortable like most stem style earbuds are. Now it works on touch controls, but we want that the touch control surface is only the very top of the earbud. There's a little bit of lag. Once you press it, there's like just a tiny bit of a lag and then it registers. I will say that this feels a little bit on the cheaper side, but for the $90 price point, honestly, it's kind of par for the cost. I feel like they could have done a little bit better on the packaging, but it's not a big deal. It's all about the sound anyway. What is cool though is for this price, while you don't get multi-point, you can still pull connections away. So if it's paired to two different devices previously, then you can go to the Bluetooth menu of one of those devices and just click on the saved icon and it'll pull the connection away to it. So that's cool. Also, you get in-ear detection. That actually is more often than not something you don't get in the budget segment. So it's very nice that this gives you. So it's a nifty little feature that I didn't know I missed so much until I didn't have it. So that's cool. It does come with an app and this is probably the weakest link in the experience. So one thing is the buds for pairing sometimes take a little longer than I'd expected. I don't know why, but more often than not, it worked just fine. However, once I paired it and I fired up the app, the app actually wouldn't recognize these. They would fail to connect to them. And even when I tried unpairing them and just restarting the whole process over again, the app did give me some trouble. So. Yeah, it's a little bit buggy, that app. And that buggy experience continues when you use the app for other things. For example, this works on touch controls, right? And in the app, you can customize them almost fully. So you've got one tap, two tap, three taps, and then touch and hold. And you can use them for volume up and down. You can use them to switch noise canceling modes, voice assistance, whatever you want, except the app didn't actually allow me to do that for a while. Like if I paired two taps to play and pause on the left, I wouldn't be able to do it on the right ear, but why? I don't know. And for a weird reason, whatever weird reason, after a few restarts of the app, it just started working better. So I don't know. I feel like they could work on the app a little bit more. And there is one more quirk of the app, although that's not just the app. We'll talk about that in the sound quality section of this video. And it's super important. So you might want to stick around for that one. And speaking of sound quality, sound quality involves microphone quality, actual sound signature, and noise cancelling and transparency or noise handling as I like to call it. And I have measured results for almost all of these except for microphone quality, which um, we should go check out right now. Okay, this is the microphone of the Master Noise Buds. No, the Noise Master Buds, that's the one. We're in a cab. There's a lot of breeze, there's a lot of noise from the highway and everything. How's it handling my voice? Can you hear it clearly? I'm gonna stick my head just a little bit in the wind, a little bit there you go. Oh my god, that's awesome. I feel like a dog. But that is a wind noise test of the master buds. What do you think? Is it any good? Is it, am I, I don't know. I'm trying to move around to try and get the wind to hit the microphone in all sorts of different ways. You tell me if it's doing, <laughs> this is ridiculous, but might be useful, might be effective. All right, now that we're done with the microphone quality, let's talk about noise cancelling and transparency mode. In this channel, I actually measure them and I show you the results and I compare with equivalent things in the market. So the equivalent thing in the market would be something like a Nothing Here A or a Moto Buds Plus. It's kind of around that price point. So what you're seeing is a reference line right on top. That is my reference noise signal. So I generate, I use a speaker, I generate a noise signal from 100 hertz to 10,000 kilohertz. Why not beyond that? Because, well, my measuring equipment is not that reliable beyond that in this kind of measurement. So there's no point. But still 100 to 10,000 is a lot and should be very, very indicative of how good or bad this is. Now, the second line you're going to see is the actual measured noise cancelling performance. So the same reference signal as sensed by these and reproduced inside the ear is what I measure using one of these artificial ears and 
this microphone and what I found was that the result was actually pretty good. Now in the higher frequencies it's mostly just relying on passive isolation which I've also measured so it's not doing any super noise cancelling in the high frequencies but in the low and mid frequencies it is doing something and the end result is that you get noise cancelling kind of between 20 or 15 20 decibels at the lowest to 30 decibels at the highest which at the $90 price point is actually really really good. Generally what you expect is something on the lines of 15 to 22 decibels, maybe 25 decibels on a particularly good set of earbuds, not usually going up to 30. This one in some frequency ranges, usually in the upper mids, goes up to 30 decibels and that's actually mostly the passive isolation but still the effect is there and it's actually pretty good for the price I'd say. Compared to the Moto Buds Plus, I think it's better compared to the Nothing Ear Ray. Also it's similarly consistent but better just in that vocal frequency zone it's better so if people around you are talking this is more likely to quell their voices just a little bit better just a little bit better so yeah pretty good for transparency what you want to see is the same reference line and then you want to see the second line reproduce the reference line as is basically i'm playing that noise signal then I'm letting it go through the earbuds and I want the earbuds to reproduce it exactly as is. That's what transparency is, right? And to my very pleasant surprise, for the most part, this did exactly that. As you can see, both these lines match really, really well right up to those upper mids where it deviates. Unfortunately, that deviation is a place where our hearing is very sensitive and you can definitely hear that in the outside world. You can hear um, some people's voices, higher pitched voices, female voices uh, being reduced a little bit rather than coming through clearly. I'm just going to leave it at that whether that's a preference or not. I'm going to leave that to you but that is the thing that happens still. It's not perfect but it is better transparency than I see in a lot of other earbuds. So I think Bose has in fact done something here and for the money alone, just for the money, the performance is I would say not bad, not game changing but pretty good. Oh, and by the way, all the noise cancelling stuff that I'm showing you is on the highest noise cancelling. I don't really see the point of changing noise cancelling modes if the highest noise cancelling is only this much, so. They're drilling above. I have one hour where I can do this. My kid is asleep, I have one hour and then I have no free time and then they start drilling. Can we continue? I hope you don't mind. Okay, let's just talk about sound quality. Okay. What I've done is I have just subjectively listened to it first and I've made notes. And if I were to sum it up in two points, it is as follows. Number one, they did not fall into the trap of overextending or over emphasizing the bass. And to compensate for that, usually they overemphasize the treble. They haven't quite done that. And to most people, when you hear it, you're going to say, okay, this is clean, this is clear, I can enjoy a wide sound stage, the bass is coming in tight and thumping, and it's pretty good. It is pretty good. However, if you have heard nicer, more, you know, well-tuned IEMs or headphones, then you will notice a couple of things. The bass is there, it's clean, it's tight. The mids seem not muddy at all, but they seem on the thinner side. Like the mids actually actively feel cheap because they feel thin. It feels almost as if the earbud is not capable of giving voices and guitars body. And also you feel like there's a treble spike somewhere, which makes everything sound just a little bit more glassy, more sparkly but perhaps a bit too much. Okay, now with these notes, I decided to actually... Wow, the two people drilling now. Are you serious, right? Oh, they stopped. With these notes, I... <laughs> uh, I hope the noise reduction in post works. I really hope it does. All right, I'm gonna take this moment to uh, plug my giveaway. This is the CMF Buds Pro. It's the old one, but it's a fun V-shaped tuning with a little bit of noise cancelling thrown in. It's only $30. You can buy it yourself, but I am giving it away. And I'm also going to give away a pair of headphones and a pair of wired IEMs that are interesting. And I'm gonna review those as well, so subscribe. But basically you need to become a channel member. It's only a dollar a month, $3 if you're feeling like supporting me. And you automatically get enrolled into giveaways. I'm just saying, just saying. Oh, and if you want, don't want to do all that, at least subscribe and like, right? Okay, back to the video. 
Now with these results, I decided to actually measure the frequency response and there's three different EQs, right? There's default, there's jazz, club and rock. So four different EQs. And then there's a custom. Jazz, club and rock all seem to make the sound worse, more forced, more bass forward, but then more vocal forward. Everything sounded very unnatural, very, very exciting, but very unnatural. And then I switched to custom to see if I can change some of the things I didn't like in the default. Now the custom gives you three sliders, bass, mids and highs, but weirdly, when you switch to custom without having touched custom, you just switch from default to custom, the sound automatically changes, which is really not very helpful for a lot of people because when you listen to the default and you go, oh, no, I, I want a little more treble or I want a little less treble and I want a little more mids, whatever, you'll switch and it's a completely different signature that you're working with. So you have to now EQ with the custom signature in mind. And this is very confusing, but I think what's happening here is that when you click on custom, it actually takes you to the baseline tuning. And then when you go to default, it applies an EQ over the baseline tuning to give you the default tuning. And the reason I think this is, is because I tried to EQ it with parametric EQ to make it sound the way I think would be better. And when I did that, and it should have sound, it should have fixed some of the things that I needed fixing, but instead the whole thing sounded like a muddy mess. So then I applied EQ over the custom EQ and that worked a whole lot better. So I would recommend, and basically I have a Discord channel that I will post this on, go into the app, switch from default to custom, don't manipulate anything, import the file that I will upload into Wavelet and then you'll see what I mean. My version of this earbud, my EQ, basically keeps the bass where it is because I know you guys like the bass so I'm not messing with that and keeps the cleanliness of the mids as well but adds just a little bit of warmth, a little bit, not too much but makes the mids sound more even and doesn't emphasize vocals so much just for the sake of clarity. It's still emphasized. You'll see that it sounds more relaxed for longer listening sessions, less fatiguing and it sounds just as detailed. I've also reduced a little spike around eight kilohertz and tried to increase the upper, upper treble, the really high treble. So yeah, go check that EQ out. But if you wanna see the frequency response, this is what it looks like. As you can see, the bass is up. That means it is boosted. This is quite normal in all Bluetooth earbuds and IEMs. It must be boosted for your brain to think that it is kind of like a speaker in a room. This one actually does not boost it to the extent that I have seen some others, but it is still quite boosted. And I'm going to show you something else in a second as well. In the mids, you see there's a little spike. While the peak is there, it is very, very pronounced, even more so than the Harman 2019 target, which is already considered to be a bass forward, vocal forward presentation. This is even more than that. And it's too much. It just sounds strained. It sounds too far forward. It sounds clear. Vocals are very clear but they're also a little bit unnatural. And you really understand that when you try the other EQ. That's why you should go and check out that. Join the Discord, try the EQ, see what you think. You don't have to like it, try it out. Also, you'll notice a spike around eight kilohertz. That's the treble spike I was hearing. Now, my measuring microphone, the uh, ear canal simulator has a natural resonance at eight kilohertz. This is quite common in this kind of rig and therefore you will always see a spike, but it's never this high. And also we see beyond 10 kilohertz, again, beyond 10 kilohertz, my measuring rig is not the most reliable, but it'll at least show me if there's something there or not. In this case, it was way down. So all the sparkle that you're hearing, all the air and sparkle in the treble, you're not hearing because there's even an extended treble. You're hearing because there's just this massive spike at around eight kilohertz and you're hearing that sharpness, which is not the way it should be. So in my EQ, I have left the bass roughly where it is, maybe reduced it a little bit, but not much. I have reduced the vocal emphasis a little, but you'll still see that it is definitely emphasized. And I've reduced the 8 kHz treble peak and tried to increase everything beyond 10 kHz a little bit to give you that actual sense of treble and air. And what you hopefully, if you're, if you feel the same way as I do, then the resultant EQ that you're hearing should be nice uh, and well extended in the treble not unnaturally spiky in any part of the treble, but still enough to emphasize that airiness and sparkle that I know you guys like, while still giving you clean, tight bass and a mids that are not thin and sharp, but nice and warm and mellow and generally not fatiguing to hear. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing. This was the default EQ setting. Remember I went to custom and then EQ'd that? This is the default setting. Custom setting looks like this, yeah. If you thought the default setting was a bit wonky, if you know how to read frequency responses, it's a little wonky. This 
is way too wonky. If this was the baseline, on the one hand, I am a little bit dismayed that this was the baseline they were working with. This is really bad. This is way too much of just everything. So I'm not even going to go into it. But I'm also kind of impressed that whoever was tuning this was cognizant of the fact that this is too much and they were trying to correct it. So good, but I think my EQ adds a little more, adds a layer on top of that and does better than the default, in my opinion. The question is, do you like it or not? Try it out, see if you like it and comment down below and tell me. So then, is this any good? The big question, should you buy it? Is this any good? Look, it's $90. For $90, there's a lot of good competition. You can get an older pair of OnePlus Buds Pro 2 and watch my video on the EQ of that and you'll get better overall technicality. You can get the Nothing Year A, which is also pretty decent and quite competitive with this, if you ask me. Or you can get something like the Sony WFC700N or the new 710N, which will also give you, Sony does pretty good tuning overall out of the box and gives you EQ to tweak it. And that EQ works quite well. That's my go-to recommendation for a lot of people if you don't know what else you're doing. So yeah, there's a lot of competition here. And I think noise is ahead of the game a little bit because they have a little better noise cancelling than I expected at this price point. Pretty good transparency, more than I have seen at this price point. So those are good. But the sound quality really could do with a lot of work. If you've already bought these, try my EQ. I've got your back. And if you want, we can work on a couple of other EQs if I have the time. Join on Discord and we'll talk about that. But I think they can do better and I think you can do better. If you already have it, EQ it. If you don't have it, maybe look around for options. But I like what they're going with this and I hope the next iteration of this sorts this problem out. Noise, if you're listening, shout out. Reach out to me. We can work on this. We can make this sound way better. Just saying. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope this was useful to you. If it was, you know what to do. Subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next one. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.